Okay guys, so I have a really cool guitar to show you guys today. You can see Psycho Squad right there. That's a little clue on whose guitar we're going to look at. Now keep in mind, I'm not selling this guitar. Don't call me up. This is just something that we want to show you guys that has such a huge history about this guitar. This video is brought to you by Swiss Picks. It's not just a pick. It's a science. Available at Zim's Guitars or at www.swisspicks.com. Yeah, there it is. Ta da! So, this is Chris Holmes of Wasp. This is his first endorsement guitar used on the first record, and you can see it on the back of the Animal Fuck Like a Bee single. And it's Jackson number J0031. This is the 31st Jackson. Well, technically kind of ever made. Although well, Rhodes had the first few. But, so, um, the yeah. The 33rd guitar with the with the Jackson name on it. Pretty close, yeah. In there, uh -huh. you know. But, uh, because I think Rhodes had a few, <clears throat> a few of his. Like, I think he had three or four made for him, but, um. And he played this on the first couple of Wasp albums. Yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, definitely it's on the first, it's on the record cover, it's on the uh, Fuck Like a Beast, you know, the infamous... Uh, and this model is called the, what's the model called? Oh, this is the Star. The Star? Uh, yeah, this is the Jackson Star, and this is, uh, I believe they say this is the first Jackson Star ever made, ever recorded. And um, what's kind of neat about this too is <clears throat> you could, um, a lot going on with uh, stories about this guitar and the paint job. You can see it has the old Jackson logo too, it's just got the regular black logo with no outline on it, and uh, Chris never had a uh, truss rod cover on this. <clears throat> that was never done. That's um, a good move on his part. Yeah, because he was always messing with the truss rods, they say. He, uh -huh. he couldn't stop playing with truss rods. So um, <clears throat> we have an ebony board, which is super cool. And uh, and on this guitar, too, it's got small frets. They, they don't feel small, but it's got smaller, it's almost like a, vin a little more in a vintage they're, style fret. They're, they're low, but they're wide. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, and and Chris, for as big as he is, because I think he's like six six to six seven. Yeah. He didn't. He's a giant. He's a giant. He didn't bang up frets, which is really weird with the guy. Because I have one of his other guitars, <clears throat> and the frets are perfect as well. He played very light for such a big dude that he was. But this one did get put through the paces. Um, some cool things you'll see on this guitar that you'll never really see on another Jackson guitar. You'll notice is the. Uh, uh, not the tail piece, but the bridge piece here, which is a Gibraltar. I believe it's called a Gibraltar, but then uh, Ibanez used them back in the day, and that was by his request. And there's a hole here, and this and this um, bridge is actually hooked into a big piece of brass inside the guitar. If you look in there, how far down it goes, it's just hooked into a big chunk of brass. Uh, some other cool stuff about this guitar is the pickup. Basically here, yeah, you'll notice it has two flat pole pieces as opposed to one... You know, Double slug. With the, yeah, with the screws. But it is the hottest fucking Duncan pickup I've ever heard in my life. It is just raging. Um, but nobody really knows what it is because it's only on Chris's guitar. Um, some of the cool things you're going to notice here too, <clears throat> some of the neat stories about it is the paint job. Yeah. Um, a lot of red on this guitar. So here's how the story goes with what Chris Holmes did. Right. Um, as everyone knows, he was generally always intoxicated. And now it's his, his, you know, his forte. So he's hanging around Jackson when they're painting the guitar. And if you look close here, you'll see this lighter red underneath these darker streaks. Yeah, little spots. Yeah, so when the painter is painting the guitar, Chris is watching. And he starts berating the painter, telling him, no, I want it more red, I want more red, give me more, make it look sick, make it look more sick. Uh -huh. So he did this supposedly enough times, this comes through the stories of Mike Shannon and other, you know, Jackson, Charville Jackson workers, uh -huh. that he pissed the guy off so bad the guy took off his pain cap and just told Chris, here, if you want it, you do it. Uh -huh. So Chris proceeded to take an entire can of paint and pour it over the guitar. Um, <laughs> I've heard that story. <laughs> yeah, so that's why, you know, you'll notice that these lines are going straight, these are all going to the side, because he just took a paint can and went all over the guitar. He wanted some blood on there. He wanted some blood, <laughs> and he got uh -huh. it. Yeah. So if we come around this way, and, uh -huh. and that's why, like, you know, it's, it's one of the more unique-looking blood guitars ever done, because, you know, Chris Holmes himself did it. 
And if you come around this way, I'm going to show you the back of this guitar. Okay. Which, and no one's really ever seen the back of this guitar. It's um, not really been photographed as well. But you can see how he's got all these streaks coming down an angle. And if you look yeah. at the back of the neck, where it almost looks like a, it almost looks like shark's teeth, from okay. just a solid red dripping off the top of this guitar, including even the headstock, <clears throat> um, which is which is pretty wild, you know. And you, and you can always see the under splatter of what the other painter was trying yeah, to do. Yeah, this is what he was trying to do, and then Holmes just came by and just yeah, dumped it. Just dumped it all over the guitar, uh -huh. you know. Um, yeah, so we got some finish cracks, some clear coat cracks. Uh -huh. This this guitar was used on the first record. Um, uh -huh. And, it, and this one was really hammered. I mean, one, one great thing about, you know, so there's a lot of finish cracks, there's a lot of clear coat cracking, chips, dings, which is kind of hard to see on the white. But um, you'll even notice, too, like even in the, in the fingerboard here, like it's missing some of the uh, clear coat over the um, fingerboard binding is mm -hmm. missing mm -hmm. on some of it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, another, yeah, and now the guitar has been blacklit, so it's never been cracked. And what's interesting, too, is that for all the abuse Chris was, he never broke the headstock, which is like a miracle in itself. Good for him. Yeah. And, and you know, on some artist guitars, there's a lot of them out there are broken headstocks. Like a lot of Robin Crosby stuff from Rat, a lot of his headstocks are broken. Uh -huh. Because he would fling them at his road, at his guitar tech or his roadie. He'd throw them around, yeah. He'd throw them. So, <laughs> you know, uh, another thing that's kind of neat, too, which is another thing in the Wasp story lore, is that, and it's probably going to be tough to see on camera, but there is actually little pock marks in this guitar, uh, little stab wounds from Blackie Lawless's saw, crotch saw blade of when he played the guitar. And, oh, uh, he let Blackie play it, huh? Yeah, with the saw blade, and uh, he indented some saw blade marks in the uh, from his cod piece there. Another cool thing, too, on this is, yeah, looking at this route here, where there's no cover for this route, but it's just... A circle, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. For the for the pot, it's just a pot in there. It's just a circle, uh -huh. which is odd because normally we'd have a, um, you know, we, we would have a uh, backplate of some sort. Yeah, we'd have a backplate, and we'd that would be routed for, uh -huh. you know, just for the pot, even just for a pot mark, but not here. Another cool thing coming around the back too is how Chris used a on his guitars like the Fender Jack plate, right. more than having. A football oval style that would have been on all Jackson guitars. Uh -huh. So that's what's kind of cool about you know getting into artist guitars and stuff that they requested and stuff they did. He um, he moved the strap button, which he did on his other guitars too. He liked oh, the strap uh -huh. button moved, and that's probably because of his size and how there you it go. Ba it, uh, balance. Yeah. He had a, had a balance on him, you know. Uh -huh. And um, cool, cool, cool. So. Let's show you some of the other cool stuff. Yeah, so, show us one of those photos. Yes, yeah, so this is Jackson number. 31. Let's get to where this guitar first made its appearance was on, we all know the infamous Animal Fuck Like a Bee single, which came out in 1984. Right. Which totally impressed uh, teenage boys like myself. Right. And uh, and there it is. There is the Blood Star on the back of there. And Chris holding it like he's going to whack someone with it, but you mm -hmm. know, that's just what he was. And um, yeah, and that was the first time I ever saw this guitar. And this essentially came out before the first record. So the first record, if we're looking at the original Wasp record, you know, this guitar was featured on the inside sleeve here and inside sleeve up there. But yeah, you can't really get a, a tight look at it the way you could on that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and through the years, the guitar ended up in being in all sorts of, you know, I think this is from Rip Magazine. And uh, Chris always had this, you know, this is one of his more used guitars that he would be seen with. And again, if this guitar is actually on the, um, on the, uh, what was that show from California, 1985 show on YouTube, um, and it slips my mind what's called now because I'm on camera. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> Live Wasp 1985, you'll see this guitar pop up. Mm -hmm. uh, some other cool stuff we have here. Let me see. You get some more general pictures here. of it. Set it right here for me. There we go. I'm going to look at uh, there we go. <clears throat> we have the original build sheet for the guitar. Wow. Which is kind of which is a, a copy, of course. But this is the original when when Chris ordered it. And uh, wow. sold to Wasp slash Chris. Right. Ten tw twelve of eighty three. Eighty three. Yeah, this is eighty three. Uh, it's kind of neat too. It comes down into you know white with blood red and will call C O D. 
So they made him pay for it right then. So 780 less discount. Yeah. He scratched something out and put cheaper prices on there for him or something. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, because this was a... $250 deposit. And, um, yeah, because, you know, he was endorsed. And One hum supplied bridge, like mm -hmm. you were talking about. Yeah, because that was the Gibraltar here. Non-tremolo star. And you know, so they had a star, a, a mm -hmm. Strat, a Tele, an Explorer, R&R &R Custom. Oh, Randy Rhodes Randy Custom. Rhodes, yeah. Randy Rhodes Student. Alder Poplar Body. So it's mm -hmm. it says both of them. Yeah, so probably it's like the Poplar Sides with the Alder Center Block. That's generally how they did it. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty interesting, you know, way on how they would... Put together their packages here. White with red blood. See Joanne. Yeah. <laughs> and Joanne was Grover Jackson's wife. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, so pretty pretty cool stuff, you know, when you get to see, you know, the, the official report here, you know. Side dots only. So yeah. so no no yeah, markers. No front markers. And he didn't want to pay for that. No, or he, he, he didn't need those. He didn't need them. <laughs> uh -uh. He was looking at it from the top down, so. Yeah. So why not, you know? And, uh. This says Duncan pickup distortion double. Yeah, it's well, like I said, it's double something, double um, rod adjustable. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, is that the know. truss rod? Yeah, I don't know what that is though, because it really has to do with the. Maybe it's a double. Um, it's just got the double uh, flat pole pieces. Maybe. Yeah, and they're calling, but they're calling it a double rod. Double row or double row. row. Adjustable? They're still adjustable, though. Yeah. I don't know. Hard to say from back then. Yeah, right? that's but, super cool, bro. And the cool thing, you know, the cool thing about Chris Holmes, too, is, and, you know, he's still playing Jackson guitars. That's the only guitars he's ever played in his life. He's never switched brands, um, you know, 40 years later. And uh, some of the cool thing about Holmes, too, <clears throat> you know, he's he's notorious. He's, he's like the Sid Vicious of metal uh for his you know for his antics and the stuff yeah he you hear stories about his car that he dr drove around just covered and just you know really dirty oh yeah yeah he, he wouldn't clean his car he wouldn't clean anything. his case is still <laughs> it's still the remnants uh, yeah it's remnants still got a lot of stuff going on and and you know the thing about chris holmes too is chris chris had a sound i mean you know it's funny too because he has his own band now but you know when you hear songs like let it roar it is that wasp sound like he has a distinguished sound for a player and while the guy you know as a guitar player he didn't reinvent the wheel but he is you know it's him when you hear him which is really cool and um and he was married to lita ford for a know, while right a couple of years a few years two or three years what years was, was, what what was that happening i'm in about the 86 to 88 oh, okay 89 range around there but um yeah they uh well like most people with lita ford it, it didn't go well but uh, he endured it. And she actually threw out one of his guitars. I believe I heard I she heard threw out that. one of his guitars. She threw it out onto the street. Yeah, put it in the garbage. Cause the and he went out and picked it up off the street or yeah, something. Because the case was stinky or something. So she just threw the whole guitar out in the garbage. Uh, <laughs> they, were, they were a fun couple. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so, um, like I said, yeah, this guy, like I said, if you look at even, like, some of the streaks underneath, it's just so, uh, just so odd. You know, like, you know that. Jackson Charvel wouldn't have, you know, generally done this. You know, and you've owned this guitar. How long have you had this? Ah, oh, I must have had this for about five years now. About five, five years, or six now. years, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, and and this came through a couple of guys where um, I you know I got it from the guy who got it from the guy who originally got it from Chris. So the reason why this was sold, uh, Chris actually sold this in two thousand two, because he was going to be going to jail, um, for the week for for um. DUI or something. Uh. July 4th weekend, he had warrants, and he was going to have to do um, some time in county jail unless he got money to get himself out of it, which is why this was originally sold, which, which kind of goes with the, the Chris Holmes legacy. It makes, you know, perfect sense. But, um, yeah, so like I said, this is uh, Jackson number 31, played by Chris Holmes of Wasp, and uh, now, like, every, like the others, it's in the Swiss Picks office and gets played quite a bit. Really cool. Can I play it? You absolutely can. Dude. All right. Take another video of you doing oh, some fun. Oh, here we go, man. <laughs> Let's plug it in. We're going to plug it in next. All right, guys. So here we go. It's my lucky day today.
I can feel those frets. They're they're tiny. Yeah. Which you know, I kind of like because when you're trying to go through bar chords real quick, mm -hmm. the, they don't slow you down. Yeah. They, they feel right on there. That's the way they feel right on that guitar. get up on your A minor up here. Yeah, it's a little crampy in there. It is. Super cool, man. There it is, guys. Chris Holmes first guitar that he played. This was on all those old Wasp albums and I feel super fortunate to be able to play it for a few minutes. And there you go guys. Thanks for watching. Everybody have a great day. Mm -hmm.